Welcome, Lina, for the Metal Temple interview. I'm very happy to have you here. It's really a pleasure. How are you and, and how is life? Thank you so much for having me. And um, everything is, I can't really complain. I mean, I think things are getting better slowly. And uh, even during the whole two years, I've been able to, you know, sing and, and do the teaching I'm doing. So I can't really complain. It's been, I, and I, I, as far as I know, I still didn't have Corona, but <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Actually, yes, the same for me. So as far as I know, I also don't yeah. know. <laughs> so you which is, yeah, a, you always don't know. So maybe I had it. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know whether it's a good thing or not, but uh, at least we came away with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The pandemic restrictions are basically gone more or less everywhere. And everyone is looking forward to live shows and festivals, I think. And how does it feel from a musician's perspective? Are you ready to go? Well, <laughs> most certainly, yes. I mean, it's, uh, of course, creating this kind of bottle effect where everything is bottled and pew, suddenly it's so many shows and tours and everything coming. So we have to see how that then affects again. Uh, and I think also, of course, venues have been very badly affected. So booking shows and everything is even more difficult now it is not you know it has left his mark for sure but let's hope that things will just improve and we also get on road finally <laughs> <clears throat> how, how did you actually see the last two years retrospectively um well i mean it's uh, it was um kind of crazy time in in many ways uh, for me personally as well because I you know I'm for example moved moved uh, to another city and got a, a new job and I'm, I'm teaching in in a couple of music schools I really love it um, teaching singing and also privately um, and uh, yeah it, it was obviously big difference with the music because there was yeah like nothing going on and um but we were still able to for example make an album with leaves eyes and make an album with angel nation so uh, again i can't really complain i mean I've, I've also been part of a lot of guest appearances which are still to come out so uh, it's been really not so bad for me to be honest that seems to be one feature of the pandemic that more albums were released isn't it could be, yeah, for sure. People have the time then to, to you know, uh, put time to that. I know some bands who released even two two albums during the pandemic, so... Yeah, and how many Lord? Was it like seven? How many? How many? <laughs> <laughs> it was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. So let's talk a bit about you. Uh, when did you start singing, actually? Well, um, I started singing probably when I was one year old. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yeah, of course... Um, let's say I started taking officially lessons when I was about 17. Um, so that was kind of the start. And then I started really studying professionally when I was 19. And yeah, then it just kind of went from there. So you do have a classical vocal education, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I have a degree, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you also studied, I think, contemporary vocals in London, isn't it? Yes, I, I made the decision then when I finished my degree in Finland that I, yeah. I moved to London. So I continued there with other styles because I was also always writing music and um, it was more pop style, you know, back mm -hmm. then. And I always hoped that I could sing it, you know, properly, like in the correct style. And so that's why I also wanted to explore that side. Mm. And then I just ended up staying there for 10 years. <laughs> <in London. laughs> so, yeah, and started the band, of course. You said uh, you started with singing lessons, of, uh, at least with 17. Isn't it quite late for, for a vocalist or is Not that the really. common age? Yeah, I mean, of course, I was always singing. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, like always, always singing. But uh, like to really take lessons, I was 17. In classical music, um, it's not actually really good to start too much earlier because you have to have the development with the larynx and everything so you're not too of course you can take lessons but like really to work on the techniques it's not good to do it too early okay how did you actually come to metal then well yeah that was when i moved to london so i first of all even during the school year i really loved rock uh like the rock period we had because we had jazz and pop and everything so rock was like my favorite mm. 
and I really loved performing it on, on, on stage. So it was something new to me. And then I met some people who introduced me to this whole metal scene in London. And I just kind of fell in love with that and got more and more into it. So that was the start of it. And then, then I thought like, oh, how could I combine this with my voice? And I, I felt like I had to start something of my own to, to try and make it work. <laughs> and then you started Angel Nation in 2011. Yeah, Enkel Nation back then, but yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Finnish name, Enkel Nation, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was the idea? Uh, idea for the band, you mean? Yes. Well, that was exactly the idea, that I wanted to write something for myself, for my voice that I felt like I could be free and I could experiment and do what basically what I want. And it started very, um, if you listen to the very first demos, it was very, let's say, much almost more electronic it was like very synth heavy stuff there was and then it more and more built into the more you know band driven sound let's say so already from the even though the sound is different from tears of last album to this album but it was still a, a metal band already then the first ep came out 2012 it's never ending isn't it Ah, yeah, true. Yeah, I think, well, yeah, that was, that was like, a, that, those songs were then included also in, in yeah. the album. Yes. And then, and then the first album that was the uh, Tears of... 2014. Yeah, 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 exactly. In 2014, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. There were a number of lineup changes, I think, from the original lineup. I think you are the only survivor, isn't it? Yes, for sure. I mean, it, it has been a, a very long journey and... Um, there has been a lot of people involved, you know, as band members and also helping the band from outside. So I always say that I'm always grateful for every each of them because, you know, I couldn't have done it alone. And every stage of the band, you know, where we started, like from the act absolutely zero and those people were there and, you know, helping me. And, mm. and then of course, you know, yes, you're right. But now we've been working together with Lucas and Julie already quite a long time yeah. and then George joined in 2017 so yeah so that's what I wanted to say um Julia I think joined in 2014 around yes and Lucas yeah, I so. uh, Julia is the bassist and Lucas the drummer in 2016 roundabout and I think since the guitarist joined in 2017 18 I think the lineup has been stable. How important is that for the, the, the development of a band, a stable lineup? Of course it's important. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just to, um, like with every, let's say, group, uh, when, where you have a group of people, and especially with music, because it's very, you know, you're creative and uh, people, it, it creates this kind of, let's say, friction, but in a good way. So it, it's, you have to have the right kind of people, first of all, and then um, you have to have kind of this one vision. It's normal, of course, to have band kind of different roles in a band, but still it doesn't work if, you know, one person or two people are not on the same page. So it is, it is very, very, very important. The second full length came then out in 2017, Aeon? Yes. Uh, but that was already released under the name Angel Nation, isn't it? Yes, that was already Angel Nation, yeah. How, what was the reason for the name change? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it became kind of apparent during over the years that people weren't really understanding. Of course, it was my, like the play with the, my name was in the middle and it was like the Finnish word and, but people didn't obviously really get it um, and they couldn't pronounce it and they couldn't remember it. So when you try and get out there as a new band and people don't remember the band name or they're very confused, mm. it wasn't very good for us. So we did then made the decision to, to change it at the end. So around the same time, a little bit earlier, uh, 2016, then you joined Leaves Eyes. Yes as a vocalist and then you entered a very busy period from 2016 onwards. I think you released two full length albums, piece touring all over the world. How did you cope with those double duties actually? Well, I mean, it was, the focus was definitely, of course, on Leaves Eyes. Um, back then it was 
uh, a <laughs> brilliant roller coaster back then, you know, jumping in there and learning all the songs and instantly on a seven week tour in, in the US. I had never been touring, I had never been in a tour bus, so it was definitely like I needed to, you know, concentrate on that for sure. But at, at that time, we were already, because Ian came out to this team. So I had already written most of those songs and it was like kind of, we were just going to start, yeah. you know, so I felt like, okay, you, I was kind of doing that on the side uh, and then, um, but I don't know, I have to be honest, I can't remember. It's, it's just somehow always been, you know, you balance it. It's, you, you just work it out and, and sometimes it's more emphasis on the other band and sometimes the other. It probably was quite a jump from Angel Nation then to Leaves Eyes suddenly, basically being part of a band that, of an international band that has touring worldwide. Uh, yeah, in, in some ways, of course. I mean, for, let's say for me, being on stage and, you know, doing what I do on stage, that wasn't really different for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I had that kind of, luckily, <laughs> that experience I've, I've gained with Angel Nation, but but of course the you know the pressure of of you know coming into the band as a new member and doing all these long tours with you know very relentless schedules and stuff so yeah of course it was a a lot of pressure of course on me as well yeah um you mentioned that it's become pretty normal that uh, most musicians have two bands three bands four bands what happens if if that clashes how does it work in practice yeah, to be honest, I haven't really had that problem. Mm. I can't even remember one time having that problem. So um, it's it's really like if, if let's say if some other band would have a, a, a tour and then you would have one gig with, of course, the tour takes priority over. Um, mm. But it, it's just like kind of you have to take it as it goes and, and think of it. OK, what makes more sense in this situation? But yeah, luckily, I can't think of even one situation. It would have been problem so far. Okay, so when the pandemic came and you worked on the new Angel Nation album, Antares, and that was released beginning of April. Mm -hmm. How was the response so far? Yeah, I mean, I, I the response has been really good, I think. It's been, um, we wanted this album to sound different than the other ones. And I think it's always going to divide people as well. Because, you know, um, the thing is, I don't want to write the same album three times. So mm -hmm. for me, it was important again to to try something a little bit different. And I think the biggest difference it's it's heavier, it's like more pounding, um, and um, it's yeah, it's more guitar driven. So it's like the the keys are much more the background on this album. And uh, yeah, I I think uh, the feedback we've gotten, for example, into the singles, the music videos has been really incredible and yeah, I've been very happy about it. And you take also all the old fans with you uh, who loved maybe the first albums with a slightly different sound, so they also love it? Yeah, I mean, uh, I can't, I don't know everybody's opinion, mm -hmm. of course, but but overall, I think, you know, we have really loyal and, and, and really supportive fan base and I can't really thank enough everyone who participated in the crowdfunding, for example, because mm. otherwise the album wouldn't be out. But but yeah, I mean, that's the thing, the, kind of the risk you have to take sometimes, that maybe maybe some mm. someone then doesn't like it so much, but I think it's worth it because, again, there's also so much variety between the songs, so there is always going to be something for everybody in a way. And I believe, especially metal fans, are really very, very, very loyal. I actually felt the album is... As you actually said already, a very powerful album, a heavy album, and very dynamic and a very dynamic modern metal album with some symphonic elements, but mm -hmm. not so much yeah, in the, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts on the sound of the album? Well, actually, exactly what you said. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's good. I, yeah. <laughs> I always, if I have to describe the music, I always say it's melodic metal. Mm. But I mean, I, I love 80s music. I always use those influences. I like the little synth bits here and there. Um, but yeah, the melodies are always where I start because I, I compose with the piano. So that's like kind of where I start and mm -hmm. write the, the vocal melodies first. 
Um, and, and yeah, and I also like rhythms, like, for example, if you look at Tears of Lust and how I, I came up with that rhythm in there, and same with the Burn, Burn the Witch, these kind of rhythmic things mm -hmm. are also my thing. But obviously I don't play guitar, so that's the thing that I have to then <laughs> leave for the others, or bass, or drums. <laughs> That brings me to the next point. So how does the songwriting work at Angel Nation? Yeah, well, it's it's usually in the way that I, I write the, the core of the song. So I write the, the let's say, chords and melodies. Um, and sometimes I also make some drum ideas, some guitar ideas, but mainly I it was a little bit different here at some songs. Some songs I made more and some songs not at all. So I, I send them only with my vocal and the, the keys and then the guys did their job so but that's how it's been from the start and then we you know discuss maybe we change something a little bit some arrangement things some part goes you know longer or shorter and or chord changes a bit but uh, that's kind of the core how it's always been since from the beginning mm -hmm. I believe it was probably a little bit different during the pandemic. Rehearsal was not always possible, all yeah. in the studio, things like that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that obviously I'm in Germany and the guys are in UK. No. So, yeah, so the they were getting together, uh, jamming the, the songs before recording and, you know, come also it was this process, but I couldn't be there. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the greatest thing, but but I think nowadays you can do so many things online and you mm. can even record on like at home basically mostly. And so it's, it's not so restrictive, luckily. I guess you write the lyrics. Yes, I do. Uh, in yes. the past, I've had a couple of uh, friends who pitched in in some songs, um, like Do It Anyway and some, somewhere else as well. But for this album, I wrote everything. Mm. So how, how does the lyric writing work with you? How, where, did you how, where do you get your inspirations from? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, it's always a mixture of my, let's say, my own life, my own life experience. They always come there. Even when I try not to, they just kind of sneak in there. Um, and for this album, it started all, almost as a concept for me. Like I had this, I have very visual images, uh, visual images in my mind when I write. So I had this vision of this army of the angels of the seraphim, and and it's also in in many of the songs on Antares. It's kind of there as a curing theme, but it's not a concept album. But it's kind of fiction and reality mixing together. And because I wrote it over such a long period, my own life changed. So those experiences then came into the songs. So it became like a journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Angel Nation produced the album and Alex Krull of Leaves Eyes, he uh, did the mixing and mastering. And I think it all was done at the Masters, at his Master Sound Studio in Germany. Of course, it's yeah. pretty convenient. Um, does it actually make a difference for you when you work with Alex as the Angel Nation vocalist compared as you work with him as the Leaves Eyes vocalist? Is that a difference? Um, regarding Alex, no. no. No, not really. I mean, it's uh, he knows how to how to mix my voice. I, I trust him 100% with that. And I actually had nothing to say about what he did. <laughs> I knew he would, would get it really, you know, right. So, no, not really. What I noticed is, and I don't know whether I'm wrong with that or not, um, I felt your vocals sound actually very different from those of Leaf's, Leaf's Eyes. They are, I think, more rock oriented mm -hmm. and not uh, as operatic. I don't think your vocals at Leaf's Eyes are very operatic, but a bit. And, yeah. But they fit the vocals, these rock oriented vocals fit perfectly to, to the Angel Nation sound. But... Yes, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing that up. I'm, um, it's, it's something I've also been, you know, I, I always like to develop my own voice and it's changed a lot over these years. Let's say even since 2016, I, I sing differently for sure. And um, with this album, I wanted to really explore that mm -hmm. more and I will also in the future. So it's, it's a matter of many 
different things in, in let's say in Liv's eyes when the songs are maybe higher much much higher I have to go yes. more into the operatic I just you know it's not possible <laughs> and uh, I always say that I will never be a pop singer for sure but it's this kind of hybrid and now I'm able to use this kind of a little bit more rock side more and uh, yeah I brought that into the songs I'm really glad you hear it <laughs> there <laughs> I'm happy that I'm not wrong with that <laughs> oh no not at all not at all you had a couple of guest contributions on the album, Jonas Weingarten, mm -hmm. uh, Cutter's Crime, Permise. He probably does all the symphonic uh, arrangements for half of the <laughs> symphonic metal albums nowadays. <laughs> and he really does a great job with everything. So I think he was restricted to one song, Way Back Home, I think. Is, and that is probably not accidentally, at least for me, one of the album highlights. So how was it? How did you get working for you? Yeah, that is a song I already actually wrote, I think, back in 2017. So it's an older song and it's uh, it's the story about my grandma who had to leave Karelia when, uh, when, the, when the war came. So it's the, the story of, 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 of her life. And um, I had this, I knew how I wanted it to sound. I, I, all, I thought either I would like to have only piano or some kind of more orchestral, you know, like a Disney style sound a little bit. But I knew that I couldn't really do it myself. And, and you know, I thought, well, maybe Jonah could help with that because I heard also the stuff that he wrote for Live Size for the documentary and it was really, really great. So. Uh, so yeah, that's how it happened. I, I asked him and, and I actually sent him only my vocals. Mm -hmm. so I gave him completely free hands because I had my piano version at home, but I didn't send it to him. And the funniest thing is that his version is completely different than mine. Like he, he chose maybe 80% different chords that I was using. So it was really interesting, but I, I'm happy. I think it came out really well and, and, and yeah, like, like I, I visioned. And I think you cannot really make any mistake if you if you ask him to do that. So uh, it seems no, he's yeah. doing really, really a great job with, you know, all the orchestral arrangement. Um, favorite songs of the album? Mine are Crucify Me and well, Way Back Home. What are yours? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so difficult always. <laughs> don't, don't tell me it changes every week. In, yeah, the thing is, like, it's also kind of different what's, let's say, for me, the most personal song is um, um, End of Innocence. So that's, that's in a way, favorite because it's very, very, um, yeah, very important song to me. But then musically, I also, I mean, I like all of them, but if I really have to pick something, I don't know. Mm. I like Seraph, uh, and then of course uh, face to face with the Merciless. I, I like the difference, like I, I like the '80s vibe or that kind of stadium rock vibe that it has. But I also like um, where the future lies, the last one. That for me, mm -hmm. that was like kind of uplifting song, and and uh, I, I I like the chorus in that song. <laughs> that's that's interesting. I would have hoped. Okay. I think Way Back Home should have, should have been the last song. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So going really out with a bang. <laughs> um, videos. Videos is nowadays very important, also in metal. You release two. That is Out of Sight, Out of Mind and Seraph. And Out of Sight, Out of Mind is what I call classical band play song video. And Seraph is more a storytelling video. How does the video process work with Angel Nation from the start, let's say from the ideas to the shoot? How does it work? Um, well, we were working now uh, with the same uh, company um, that we had already for Burn the Witch. And uh, I had, you know, long, let's say, brainstorming and also storyboarding, uh, just meetings with him. And I had the, the idea for Seraph already long ago. It kind of changed a bit uh, because, of course, also the location is going to dictate a little bit. But that was the initial idea that I had, that we are, you know, locked, kind of lost ourselves, forgotten who we are. And then we kind of hear this music and finally come back together and play as a band. 
um, and then then out of sight, out of mind, was yeah a story of this stalker type of we want some creepy mood for that video and then as it cuts in the middle that you see the actual process of the video being filmed so like it's, it has different mm -hmm. camera angles so it's just yeah idea and then coming up with the details then of course locations and then finally yeah doing it so it's it's a lot of work <laughs> for sure and long days and everything but uh, it was really great and I was so grateful that we were able to do two videos this time again thanks to the fans so Hmm. Uh, and I guess the pandemic probably had also an influence because maybe location where restrictions on locations or things like that. So did that have an effect? Yeah, for sure. And also I have to say that in London, everything is just extremely expensive. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so it's very, very difficult to find anything you want. If you had like endless amount of budget, then yeah, it would be easier. But I think we found really excellent location at the end both of them even though the second one was um smelling like a fish and barn at the same time <laughs> but okay. it, it worked for that video <laughs> okay well actually regensburg it's which is your place i think now would have maybe a bit cheaper uh, in terms of locations isn't it yeah true but then the guys would have to fly over so <laughs> yeah always <laughs> what to pick then yeah coming back a little bit to you um Musicians are nowadays busy with multiple projects, so are you. For example, you have also been in the project uh, Maiden United, you have been there in 2019. And also you do have a couple of guest appearances. And as I understood you correctly, there will, become, uh, there will be a few more in the future. You were guest vocalist on the new Chaos Magic album, Emerge, isn't it? How did yeah. this come? Yeah, yeah, that's one of them, yeah. So. Yeah. That's I'm also looking forward to to hearing because I still didn't hear the final version how okay. it turned out, <laughs> but I really like the song, so I, I look forward for everyone to hearing it. And so how did how did the collaboration start? Um, I believe it was through uh, the Vivaldi Metal project because I was also there doing right. a little part, and I believe uh, Katarina is also mm. on that album. So it was kind of like a through there somehow they just contacted me and and yeah. That's how it started. Right. Um, let's talk about inspirations. Mm. <laughs> who difficult, and what? Difficult. <laughs> <laughs> even better, even better. Um, who and what inspires you in music? Yeah, this is always, uh, it's like asking my favorite song from the album. Those These two <laughs> questions are always <laughs> most difficult because I'm inspired by so many things. I mean, like I have the classical background, and then uh, I like all kinds of music, so I can get inspiration almost from anywhere. Would be probably surprising <laughs> for some people to hear sometimes, but um, it can also be just a lyric. Some lyric can come in my mind, and then you know, it actually has really, and, and it just becomes with a comes with a melody, and then it's a little thing that I start kind of. I have a lot of things on my phone, me going, ah. <laughs> and then later on you go like, what is that? <laughs> but yeah, many of the demos are still there on my phone. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let's say, if I have to say something I admired when I was a, uh, a young girl, I already admired uh, Freddie Mercury always. I really loved Queen. My brother was always listening to Queen, and, and uh, of course I was as well then. <laughs> and um, and later on, yeah, really the 80s, 80s rock and metal. I love that stuff a lot. So you can definitely hear that influence in the music for sure. Uh, but then everything, you know, anything and everything um, in between. So difficult. How, how do your inspirations influence you as, as a musician? Um, well, I mean, of course, um, as a singer, you listen to different yeah. kind of singers and, and you, you know, there's so many excellent singers, both male and female, and it's always good to, I, I like to always, like I said, I've been evolving as a singer myself and I like to always explore my voice. So it's, it's, you know, useful to even, even nowadays on YouTube, there's so many more interesting videos. Mm can watch like master classes and all kinds of stuff you can always find something from from everyone i think you said you like the 80s uh, rock and metal 80s you do not sound like rob helford or bruce dickinson isn't it 
Yeah, no, no. Unfortunately, I would. I would. <laughs> or oh, like Nora, Nora from Battle Beast. Uh, she's yeah. she's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have to t I have to ask you that then. Uh, who are your three favorite metal vocalists? Oh, that's very difficult to say because I, you know, I admire very many many singers. But yeah, okay. Also, Nora. I, I think Nora is excellent, really excellent. Mm -hmm. But then, for example, Sharon and Adele from Within Temptation, very different kind of voice, but I still think she's really great. And uh, yeah, Dora Pesh, for example one again a little bit different but yeah D difficult again to pick i mean there's so many and and so many different styles as mm -hmm. well you know of course then the growl people who growl that's another thing so that's another thing yeah yeah, yeah. did you ever consider that um yeah i would love to i love to know the the really like the correct technique to do it mm -hmm. i know the, the mechanics of it mm -hmm. but i would never do it until i know very yeah. well how to do it because i don't want to ruin my voice <laughs> well i actually uh did a lot of interviews with growling vocalists and uh they all tell me a different story how we did it whether they have lessons or not so some of them have lessons some of them don't some of them just look at youtube videos or some of them don't do anything so it all seems to work somehow yeah i think it's always individual but, yeah. but it's, it's especially with a, such an extreme way of using yeah. the vocal the false vocals and everything it's it's important to know what you're doing for sure <laughs> i always have something a category like let's get personal aha uh -huh, okay <laughs> yes and it's easy it's easy i give you either or You know, uh, I give you keywords either or, so either that uh -huh. or that. I do have a couple of them, well, 10. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's go through them. Um, car or bicycle? Sorry, what? Car or bicycle? Ah, bicycle. Bicycle. Uh, I don't have a driving license. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> okay, uh, how is that in Regensburg? Regensburg is already a little bit hilly, isn't it? Uh, a little bit what, sorry? A little bit hilly, so there are quite a lot of... Um, yeah, well, I mean, I have my route, I cycle to, the, to you know, work and stuff. It's, it's right. all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Thriller or comedy? Uh, comedy. Comedy. What's your favorite one? Oh, well, how would you categorize a, a comedy? There's so many good ones, like the yeah. really silly ones, uh, Dumb and Dumber, and then there's uh, some mm. like it Hot, for example, it's an mm. old movie. So, <laughs> <laughs> stupid ones and like more sophisticated ones. And there's the one, I can't remember the name of it, of course, now. But all these oldies as well, like right. the really comedies in the, in the, mm. in the, a little bit, you know, um, uh, Back in the days, let's hmm. say. What's the last one who watched? You watched, so you remember? Hmm. Comedy. I, I mm -hmm. haven't seen a really good comedy for a long time, to be honest. Uh, it would be good to. I can't remember which would have been the last one. Yeah, I can't. I can't say now. I have to think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. I think the next one is very obvious. Well, at least for me, uh, gym or sofa. Oh no, that's very difficult. But at the moment, it's sofa because I actually don't go to the gym. I, oh. I train at home, so okay. I, don't, I don't go to the gym. <laughs> uh, I think you have been in Finland for over Easter, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Uh, don't you have your 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 weights with you and? Yeah, well, I was having a bit of a holiday there, so I wasn't really training so much. Right. But they had some. My mom has some weights there, so I was doing a little bit of something. Yeah. When you are in the gym, what is what? What do you do then? Lifting weights or cardio or what? What is no, your? No, lifting weights mostly. Lifting weights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spinning. Not so much. I just oh. go outside rather. I, I think we need to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do spinning classes in Helsinki like ages ago. Right. Okay. But that's a long time ago. Interesting. Pizza or pasta? Uh, oh, both are so good. But let's say pasta. Pasta. You live in Germany since when? Uh, 2018. Okay. And I think you always lived in the south of Germany, Bavaria. Yes, yes. Yeah. So how do you like the Bavarian cuisine? 
Mm, yeah, well, it's not really my. I, it's very meat heavy, so yeah. I, I don't need so much meat. So it's. But I mean, it, it has some like the. Um, uh, what is it? Spätzle, Käse Spätzle, for example. Spätzle, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but it's, it's really heavy. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it is. It is, but it's good. <laughs> Um, which would give you more gym time then? Sorry? That would give you more gym time. Then ah, yeah, true. Yeah, to after burn the heavy, yeah, to burn oh, up, yeah. Facebook or Instagram? Oh, no. Those are my only two social medias I do. So mm. I do them very equally. Okay. But oh, if I have to choose, then maybe Instagram. Maybe Instagram. Vinyl or downloads? Um, I would have to say downloads because I don't have a um, vinyl player and I, I don't have really right. room to, unfortunately, really, I don't even have so many CDs at mm -hmm. either. So and for that reason. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a CD collector, actually. Um, uh -huh. Vinyl, I think Antares is available as vinyl as well. I think first time you did it, isn't it? Yes, it's coming on the 3rd of June, yes. Yeah. Right. So, mathematics or history? School topic. What's your favorite? Oh, I used to actually love mathematics in, in high school, but let's say history still is maybe a bit more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, right. Interesting. But not sure if I was so good at it, to be honest. <laughs> a dog or cat? Dog, for me. You do have a dog? No, I don't. But I, 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 if I have to choose, I mean, I love all animals, yeah. but I, I love dogs. Uh, we used to have a golden retriever for 13 years right. when I was a kid. So I really have a spot, you know, soft spot for them. <laughs> Maybe to explore something, for, but of course, if this busy schedule of leaves ice comes, comes back, so then it's, it's probably more rather difficult to have. A... Yeah, it's, it's a lot of responsibility, of course. Yeah. To someone, yeah. Yeah. Brother or sister? Brother. Do you have? You... Yes, I have one, yeah. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, holiday. Sea or mountains? Sea, probably, for me. As a Finnish native, I probably would have guessed that. Yeah, I guess I haven't experienced mountains so much, but it's been more lake for me. It's, it's yeah, been, it's more lake, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Helsinki is by the sea, so yes. yeah. Um, but now in Germany, uh, Bavaria is actually very close to the mountains, so you might explore that's that one. True. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, with, you with your bike, with your bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some exercise. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can also consume the Bavarian heavy food, you know. Yeah, exactly. A perfect balance. <laughs> Excellent. I think that was the exploration. That was all about it. Coming back. The Angel Nation, yeah, okay, so we mentioned that already the Nambuka show is off, Friday the 13th, that has been the release show that has been planned, so unfortunately that is off. So what else is coming up for Angel Nation? Probably if trying to get a replacement for that, but what else? Yes, we have, uh, I'm literally right <laughs> as we speak, I've been in contact with uh, already with people about that. So we are trying to organize something a little bit more as well, maybe a little bit more dates. Let's see what we can do. And then we would, of course, love, love to come to the rest of the Europe as well. But uh, let's see, because the organizing is just very difficult at the moment. Mm. Also, because so many rescheduled shows are there. Yes. But we'll see. Uh, we're hopeful. We have some really great people working with us. So hopefully we can announce something soon. I also still have, I think, around 10 show tickets from 2020, oh. 2021, etc. And I hope they will get all rescheduled. Among those, there is a Leafs Ice ticket. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes. What about touring plans with, with Leafs Ice? Yes, there are plans. So keep keep hold on to your tickets. Okay, <laughs> I hold on to my ticket. There will yes. be some announcements soon, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm actually through with the questions. Is there anything you would like to say to your fans, to the readers of Metal Temple magazine? Well, I mean, 
I just like to um, one more time say a huge thank you to everyone who helped us with this album and of course everyone who bought it and, and hopefully are enjoying it and I really hope to see everyone live very soon. I really can't wait to play the songs live, to, you know, to get that uh, feedback also from the live audience. So I really, really hope to see everyone soon on the road. Excellent. Thank you so much. It was such a fun to have this, to make this interview with you. Uh, thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, it was, it was really my pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs>